Hey there, welcome. It's the James Show, News Talk 820, WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Welcome back to the big show. So if Hispanics support mass deportations, is it still racist? That's the question. 800-288-9227, 800-288-WBAP. And this is now being asked because a poll came out and actually multiple polls from that right wing extremist outfit ut austin get it because they're not really (laughs) right wing Uh, they actually showed the number of hispanics in favor of deporting illegal aliens not only is it a majority it's still going up 56 percent of hispanics in the last poll the one before that that they were talking about uh, about a week ago 53 percent so that's interesting because one of the main criticisms for you evil, racist, Klansmen m- monsters that want to have mass deportations, well, you must be racist. Okay. You can't think of any other reason. Uh, there's, there, there's no other reason other than I just, oh, I can't, hate, I can't ha- handle all that pigment on your skin. It's a silly contention to make, and it stinks that we can't win the debate just based on the merits of our arguments, but at least... At least we have data like this where we can say, see, what about them? Are they? Why, why, why do they want mass deportations then? I get it. My, my opinion means nothing. I'm an evil, straight, white Christian male. We're worse than a bear. I get it. Now, all right, now, now they're saying it. What are you going to say to them? So that's the fun part about these polls. It's not that it even tells you anything you didn't already know. It's just ridiculous ammo in the 2024 political landscape. Kevin. You're in North Richland Hills and now on the James show, you're on WBAP. What do you think? Kevin, go. Oh, um, I've got a friend of mine, ex Vietnam vet. He's Hispanic. He wants to see them all deported and uh, he served his country. And I don't know if you ever worked with, know anybody that was a Vietnam vet. They don't talk about it. Okay. But they serve their country and they are very, very upset about uh, all the stuff that's going on with us illegal um, uh, infiltration. Well, you can't say they. It's not like an overwhelming majority, but 56% are in are in your friend's camp there. And I'm guessing if he's a Vietnam vet, uh, he is Hispanic, but his legal status has long been cemented. Well, I, I don't, well, I'm not sure about that, uh, but uh, I worked with a lot of other Vietnam vets and they think the same way. And um, I worked for a company uh, that's no longer business <clears throat> aircraft company. And uh, they deported um, uh, illegals uh, via aircraft. And uh, I talked to one of the, uh, the guys that was a flight mechanic and I was just a mechanic with him. And he said, uh, you know, I can't believe what went on. I said, what, what are you even talking about? And he said, well, he said, all these guys are in shackles and girls are in shackles and these guys with uh, the armed guards, M16s, and they fly them down to um, El Paso and put them on the buses, and uh, and they go over the the border. And the one guy, when he got off the aircraft, and the the guy that was uh, the guy with the M16, he, he knew him, and he said, "Hey, I'll see you in two weeks." So you ship them out, and boom, two weeks later, they're back. Well, I can understand how legal immigrants would – I'm surprised not. it's not like 90% because they went through so much to get here legally. They're the ones who have to feel like the most amount of unjust – you know, unfairness or whatever the better word is for it – to see people that are allowed to just walk across the border, get a piece of paper, and go on about their, their day. Uh, but – as bad as it is, some of these stories, like the one that Eric was telling you about from the, the, the girl in Houston who was killed by illegal immigrants, it's not just they were killed by illegal immigrants, it's that they've already been in custody several times and just let go. And that is actually, I think that's changing public opinion more than the actual facts on the ground. Like, this is what it's costing the taxpayers. This is what it's doing to your health care. This is what it's doing to drag down the education system. You know, these little anecdotal stories shouldn't matter, but I think they do. Yeah, they do. Also, uh, I, I've written a book about this stuff. It's called From the Outside Looking In. And uh, anyway, but uh, it, so anyway. That, that, uh, that was the plug ding. Anytime someone just magically plugs their own work, sorry, the, 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 the AI, the AI just, does it. That's I all just, right. That's all right. I didn't install I just, it. I, I, got, I got upset about all this stuff. And uh, there was a guy on WBAP, Rick, uh, and he said, we need boots on the ground. 
And this is my way of saying, okay, we've enough is enough. And uh, us guys that uh, had top security clearances coming out of the uh, woodwork saying, uh, we're in a dilemma here, not just with the border, but uh, with our country. Give me your book. But, Give me a free copy of your book. I'll read it. And uh, I might have you back on. Um, well, I, okay, but I don't know uh, how to get that to you. Dude, it's 2024. Anybody on planet Earth can find me. But James right, at WBAP.com. James, look, uh, if, I will. if you I can't will. find a guy that has a talk show on WBAP in the afternoon, so if you can't get in contact with me, I don't want to read your book. You're, you're, you're disqualified. But I'm sure you can. <laughs> everybody can. Because everybody... If they uh, get mad enough, thank you. If they get mad enough at me, oh, they'll find me. They'll find me on usually Facebook Instant Messenger and let me know just how sorry I am as a human being. Welcome to the James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Forgive me as I throw in all kinds of qualifiers and caveats and reminders in here because I don't want this to be able to be taken out of context because some people are going to hear this and intentionally mishear what I'm saying. And uh, I'm going to make it really hard for those people in, who listen to this show in bad faith. There's a horrible, horrible story. Gateway Church, you ever heard of it? Gateway Church is in the news because their senior pastor, Robert Morris, resigned last week after some accusations against him for, for awful things with a 12-year-old girl back in the 80s. Now, this is just a god-awful story because if this guy has been, he, he did this to a 12-year-old girl in the 80s, you think he just stopped? You think it was just like this one-time thing? He's like, hmm, that was fun. Guess I'll never do it again. No, you've heard too many stories about how these guys just keep doing it over and over and over until they get caught. On top of that, it's terrible because his he exploited uh, people's religion. He exploited his position and uh, the fellow Christians around him. And used his position and used that trust in order to do these horrific acts. On top of that, just the whole hypocrisy. I mean, just it's just the ugliest story. And I don't really like talking about these because there's not a whole lot to learn here, except for some people are just absolutely evil. And some people, even if they are standing in front of the, uh, in front of you behind a pulpit, can still be terrible people. That being said. There's no but, because whenever you say but, that has a tendency to negate everything you said before that. Like when people say, well, listen, I'm I'm not going to say anything racist here, but, and then usually something racist follows that, right? I'm not doing that. I didn't say but. That's terrible. Everything you did is terrible. However, let's talk about these people who are protesting. About a dozen people protested outside the church on Saturday, uh, according to Fox 4 News here. I got this at fox4news.com. And they were carrying signs were saying, like, justice for Cindy. She was 12. They knew. And uh, the Gateway Church, this is all according to Fox 4 reporting. Gateway Ch- Church told the Christian Post the allegations were brought to, like, 35 years ago. Their pastor stepped away for two years to receive counseling. And then he got it. I guess he got his job back. So right now, he's not facing any charges connected to the accusation. I don't I, look, I'm not a lawyer. Is there a statute of limitations? I don't know. I don't know. Should he face charges? I hope so. I hope something negative happens to this guy. He sounds like an absolute monster. I didn't know these people could be rehabilitated, but I'm interested in these dozen protesters. Media, you did a pretty good job covering this one. I have no complaints for you. But the protesters, I'm sure your heart's in the right place. Or is it? Are you a person that sees the abuse of a 12-year-old girl? And you just can't stand it. So you got to go make some signs and you got to go stand outside of that organization and you got to let the world know how bad they are. For any of these, let's just say there's 12 protesters that said about a dozen protested. For any of those people, have they ever protested when a kid was abused at a school? There have been 12 year olds who've been abused. Did you ever make signs and go protest that school or the school district or the ISD or the superintendent's office or the Texas Board of Education or anything like that? What about any of these? What, what, what about when a, a kid's abused at a daycare? Did you go protest that? If you only protest when you hear about a kid being abused at a church, well, then you're not a pro-kid activist. You're not concerned about the well-being of children in general. Because if you're only concerned about the well-being of children, if it goes south in a church setting, you're just an anti-Christian bigot. You have a pre-existing anti-Christian bias. This is the most likely scenario. I'm not saying I know this about all dozen people that were there, but this is this is the most likely mindset. You're an anti-Christian bigot waiting for an excuse to go convince the rest of the world 
to stop being sympathetic toward Christianity. You're trying to proselytize. You're trying to get people away from believing in Jesus into believing more of what you believe in, whether it's a plurality or secularism or atheism or agnosticism. That's what I want to talk to you about. Are these people really just concerned because a 12-year-old was exploited? Or are they taking advantage of a 12-year-old being exploited to slander Christianity? You know, the, the slander of Christianity in modern times is just a luxury of the affluent. Christians are not committing terror attacks. Christians are not like saying, hey, we found some infidels. We're going to saw off their head on this video and upload it to YouTube. Christians are not taking a pilot that has been downed uh, from a, a, a Jordanian fighter plane and then putting him in a cage and slowly lowering him into a pond. Christians don't go to a, uh, a Christmas celebration, start shooting it up like San Bernardino. But it's there. And it's one of the, uh, it, it, it's one of the many bullet points on just this general anti-Western, anti-American, anti-traditional values. I mean, the, look, Christianity and the church is full of human beings. Some of them are going to be horrible human beings. Some of them are going to do criminal things. Some of them are going to be pedophiles. But for the overwhelming majority of people going to church and at least attempting to live a Christian lifestyle, why would you berate people for trying to better themselves? Why would you try and stop people from, hey, this old book of wisdom, why would you want to go study that? Let's not study that. Just sleep in on a Sunday. That's how I feel about this. This just feels like plain old exposed anti-Christian bigotry. And again, I, I, this, I told you I was going to put the caveat in there a, a bunch. Here it is again. Of course, what the pastor did is completely abhorrent. It deserves all the condemnation in the world and an, an eternity of hell in the next world. And I think everyone agrees with us. No one's arguing that. You selective protesters, though. That's, that's I want to talk to you. <laughs> you think one of the protesters is listening to the show? There's only a dozen. But please, if, I mean, if you were, I would love to talk to you. I would love to have a chat with you because I think some of you, your, your heart's in the right place. You've just been led down this road and it hasn't really dawned on you yet. Why don't we protest at schools when a 12 year old girl is abused? Why don't we protest at a daycare or anywhere else? Why aren't you protesting the 12 year old that got abused and strangled to death by the illegal immigrants in Houston? Same age. That one, he actually died from her abuse. Where's the concern there? Are you protesting illegal immigration today? Are you protesting the, the lax border policies of the current administration? No? Well, then you don't really care about 12-year-olds suffering. You're just a silly little Christian bigot. And it's ugly. 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Am I being too hard on them? You can tell me I'm wrong if you think I'm wrong. But that's what I see. 800-288-9227. And yeah, and that's the other big story that's going on right now is the the Houston. I hate this story too. I hate talking about people doing horrible things to kids. This is just such gross stuff. But the Venezuelan illegal immigrants who killed the twelve year old Jocelyn Nungri in Houston. That's something that I, I I wish I wish just would never happen. But I wish it would get the same amount of ire from these people that want to go pro protest the Gateway Baptist Church. You know, it's 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 one of the few things that you could still protest here and people don't call you a bigot what's what's the word for an anti-christian bigot because if you know if you're if you're against jews you're anti-semitic if you hate uh the people who follow islam you're an islamophobe what's the word is, is is there a word christianophobe is that a word have you ever heard it said has fox 4 ever put it on their their website has anyone ever said it on cnn christianophobe christophobia Right. Just rolls off the tongue. Everyone just says that all the time in debates. I get accused of that all the time. Yeah, Christophobia. That's all. 800-288-9227. It's just another one. Look, here's the, here's the rule. If, if you're wondering what the new rules of political correctness or woke or whatever you want to call it are, if you want to know if you can insult it and get away without being called a, a bigot or a hateful person of some site, just ask if it's me. If it's James Parker, yes, yes, you can go protest anything about me. You can go cuss my race. You can slander my gender. You can say horrible things about my religion or my sexual orientation. No one will run to my defense. That's the rule. It's the James Parker rule. Can you protest it without being called a bigot? I don't know. Is it James? If the answer is yes, then cool. Protest away. You're not a hateful person. I don't like these rules. This can't last forever. I can't wait for this pendulum to swing back the other way. I was talking about the, my, my, my oldest kid is 13. 
And uh, I've been hanging out with a lot of 13 year olds. I have like four kids. So I've been hanging out with a lot of like teens and preteens lately. Uh, the pendulum's swinging. The pendulum is swinging back hard. And I don't know, maybe it's just because I hang out with kids in bug tussle or whatever. But this, this, uh, this cultural norm, this isn't going to last long. It's too flimsy. 800-288-9227. Uh, coming up next, we're playing Dead or Alive, and you have a chance to win tickets to see Tucker Carlson live with Roseanne Barr September 24th. If you want to go and buy tickets, TuckerCarlson.com. If you want to just play along in your car, stay put. That's next on The James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3.